A nearly 12-hour hostage situation inside a North Texas synagogue. We are following the details about the hostages that escaped as officials are tracing the moments and motives of that hostage taker who was eventually killed. For more, I want to bring in ABC News senior investigative reporter Aaron Katursky, who was following this as it was happening, had uh, many people, including this nation, on edge. Uh, Aaron, you have been following uh, the story from the start. Just give us the latest in what you're reporting today. Kira, we're learning that the, the hostage taker, Malik Akram, the 44-year-old British national who was shot and killed by the FBI hostage rescue team, had been on the radar of British authorities. Uh, he was investigated a year or so ago by MI5. We're not exactly sure the nature of that investigation or what brought him to the attention of the British, but that investigation ended without any action being taken that would have prohibited him from traveling to the United States as he did on December 29th on a flight from London to JFK here in New York. He seems to have kicked around New York for a couple of days and is first spotted in the Dallas-Fort Worth area on New Year's Eve. And while he's in Texas, he was able to purchase a gun on the street uh, from somebody that he had met while staying in a homeless shelter. And that's the gun that the rabbi of Congregation Beth Israel said he became aware of during Saturday morning Sabbath services. His back was turned in prayer, the rabbi said, when he heard a click. And apparently this is uh, someone who was there having tea with the rabbi before all of this happened. Do we have any idea about a motive? That may have been just a, a, a ruse in order to gain access to the synagogue. The rabbi said he had knocked on the window. Uh, he let him in. They had a cup of tea. They talked for a bit. Uh, but it was during worship services when, in fact, the, the hostage taking began. Those services were live streamed on Facebook. Eventually, Facebook took down the live stream, not before congregants saw what was unfolding. Law enforcement, though, had eyes on it the whole time through the synagogue's closed circuit camera system. And that certainly gave them an understanding of what was happening in real time. The uh, gunman had demanded a lot of things, uh, including the, the release of Afia Siddiqui, a convicted terrorist from 2010. She was serving an 86-year prison sentence in the Fort Worth area. And best as law enforcement can figure, Kira, that's why Malik Akram chose the synagogue that he did. Well, we will continue to follow the investigation along with you. Aaron Katursky, thanks for your time this morning. Thanks, Kara. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.